looking out uh, towards Manchester, you could just see the, the blue flashes taking place and you saw the lights flickering, the traffic lights on and off. And uh, I remember making a phone call saying, this is bad, we're gonna be here for a while. I can remember um, losing power and going outside and hearing the trees just breaking like uh, it was nothing I've ever heard before. And I knew that was the start of something that wasn't gonna be very good. It was quiet. There were so many broken poles across the state. The power was out, the telephone lines were out. It was difficult to communicate. It was actually really pretty on the drive-in because everything was covered in ice. When I got to the office, it was really important to communicate what was going on very quickly. And the easiest way to do that, to get out to a lot of people, was to go to Twitter. And we only had about 110 followers at the time, but that audience consisted of a lot of media. We had to get a lot of crews in, so a lot of phone calls were being made to try to get external help and the stress levels in the, in the Incident Command Center were very, very high. Yeah, definitely one of the worst events I had seen. Then the next day, the sun was out and it was a beautiful day, yet there were hundreds of thousands of customers without power in the state. Because of the severity of the storm and the heaviness with the weight of the ice and the snow, took a lot of trees and limbs down, so roads were not passable. We, we had to have boots on the ground everywhere to understand the magnitude of the damage. You know, obviously we knew there was a number of customers impacted, however, the magnitude of the restoration, uh, what the reconstruction looked like, took several days to, uh, to understand. The last time we dealt with a large storm restoration was 10 years prior, back in 98, and that one only had 55,000 customers out at its peak. This one, in comparison, had 322,000 customers without power. It took a lot of uh, manual effort to sort and group the customer calls into locations that were related to each other. Today, you know, we've invested in GIS, which allows our customers, uh, us to know where our customers are connected on the grid and we can utilize the outage management system to make better and quicker judgments on the order of magnitude of the number of outages. On the front end of the storm, that makes a, a huge difference in being able to get our crews out on the largest outage, you know, right out of the gate. The devastation was something that we had to communicate. So we sent out photographers and we posted those pictures on Flickr and produced six videos during the course of the storm that we posted on YouTube to give people a much better view of what the restoration looked like, whether it was from within some of our service centers to out into the field. A lot of the lessons learned from the 08 ice storm in the way that we set up satellites has helped drive some of the changes that are out there with our mobile trailers that we have and being able to go anywhere at any time and set up a satellite operation in just a matter of hours. Given the number of customers that were without power, the call volume was very, very extensive and there were long wait times. With the new technology that we have, customers now have the ability to report whichever way they'd like to. The ice storm was a turning point for our social media. We were just answering questions when we could and with answers that we had while we were up. Now we've grown the team that handles requests and we have a team in our call center that is dedicated just to social customer care and is able to answer their questions 24-7. That's a game changer. And we can utilize the outage management system to message customers um, based on what we're seeing and their restoration times where back then uh, we could not automatically do that. So a huge advancement in the technology has helped. When an event happens, the communities have a dedicated liaison to make sure that we're serving them with the information they need to allow them to make the important public safety decisions. Over the last 10 years, we have uh, significantly improved the system and hardened the system across the state. Taking uh, sections of line that used to run through the woods, we've taken those out of the woods and put them on the roadside. Obviously, the, uh, the, the taller, larger poles you know, will affect the durability. Covered wire is certainly going to uh, help reduce the outages that take place. Redundant feeds creates a loop. We can isolate smaller sections. We've done that across the state, making a significant difference. Our maintenance programs have um, you know, certainly been more active since that time, and uh, I think you really see the difference as you, um, you look at the number of outages we're experiencing. Having an outage map has really 
made a huge difference in what we're able to communicate to the public and also just internally how easy it is to be able to see the magnitude of the storm and what's going on and how many people are out. That's something that we didn't have during the ice storm, but nowadays it's, it's fantastic. We are now part of a, a larger system which now includes uh, Eastern Massachusetts. So the resource pool that they offer is one that we weren't able to take advantage of back in the 2008 ice storm. We all do things the same across the Eversource enterprise, so we don't have to learn how other folks do things. So that allows us to uh, hit the ground running very easily. You know, it's cold weather, tough situation, but uh, you know, we had so many people coming into that National Guard armory, dropping off cookies, drinks, coffee, saying thank you. What we did during the storm became a communication template for how we communicated with any other storm thereafter. So it was pretty beneficial to us going forward and we've been using that playbook all along. It was uh, you know, two weeks prior to, to, uh, to Christmas as we were out in Peterborough. It was only a week away to try to help offset some of the effects of being gone and away from home as we led up to Christmas. We went and got a Christmas tree and set it up in the restoration room, which was in the National Guard Armory. And we decorated it with any pictures and any messages that were sent from anyone that was there, their family, and we actually hung them in the tree. You know, a lot of people continually asking as we got closer and closer to, uh, to Christmas, uh, were we gonna make it home in time? And, uh, you know, I can tell you that uh, I was appreciative to make it home about 8.30 on Christmas Eve after two weeks. and. Uh, my kids were uh, pretty excited.